Duxiga boarding here, Malala, a manu, a manu boarding and day school. Another good day is here. Good morning, candidates, and welcome to our video lesson three. And I want to believe that you are able or trying to keep safe at home. And as you continue keeping safe, we are following up the assignments that are being sent by teachers. And we are also trying to watch these video lessons. One thing I want to instill into your mind that you are candidates, you are preparing for exams, and please don't forget to follow what the teachers are giving you. Now, straight away, I welcome you to move with me in this lesson today. This is video number three, as per the presentations that you have been following since we began the online video, video classes. So, before we come here, let us try to review what we did last time. Now, last time, we were trying to look at adverbs, and that was also grammar. And today, we also want to concentrate on grammar. So basically, just try to understand what we talked about adverbs and the types of adverbs and also how to form what? Adverbs. Because the moment we have that given knowledge of how we are using those given adverbs, then we are able to understand this topic here. We shall be able to understand combining what? Sentences. Because we cannot combine sentences. We understand very well that Sentences in English are made up of the different parts of what? Speech. So adverbs are part of it. So we cannot run away from adverbs. We have to understand that given knowledge that we learned in our last lesson so that it helps us to move and look at today's what? Lesson. Now I want to welcome you to this lesson which is what? Combining, combining sentences. Now, we can combine two or more sentences into a single sentence. This can be the case because sentences are closely related in meaning and belong together and because it's boring to read a series of short sentences that have a similar what? Structure. Let me try to make it easy for you to understand. That in English we have different types of sentences. We have simple sentences, we have compound sentences, and we have complex what? Sentences. Having looked at these three types of sentences in English, we are saying we can combine what we are calling the simple sentences. We combine them. Instead of trying to read very many sentences at a go, or you read so many sentences, it sounds good that we combine those given sentences into one. And probably that is why we land on a compound sentence, or that's why we land on a complex word, sentences. And please, remember that we cannot again fail to understand the aspect of clauses. When we talk about a clause, a clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb, and exactly that is what we are calling a what? A sentence. Now, now, having said this, you can combine two or more. Please concentrate on that. There are two or more. The moment you combine two or more sentences, and then you are moving into something. And I think by this time, it should be sticking into your mind already that simple sentences are being combined into complex what? Sentences or into compound what? Sentences. Compound when there are two. Complex when there are more than, more than, more than two. Now, when talking about combining sentences, we often use the word clause, which is a group of words containing a subject and a verb. A sentence that contains only one clause is called a simple sentence. I've actually explained that. A sentence that contains one given clause is called a simple word. It's called a simple sentence. For example, if we talk about Tom... played. Tom played. Now, even if we say Tom played the ball, this is a simple sentence. Now, this sentence contains only one clause. And we have said a simple sentence is that one that is containing one subject and a verb. Where is the subject in this given sentence here? The subject is what? Tom. What did Tom do? Tom played. That specifically tells you that even if you delink this part from this given sentence, this sentence up to there still makes sense. It is a simple word sentence. So we say, Tom, Tom played. Tom played is a simple sentence. It's a complete 
clause. It is one clause because it is having a subject and a word and a verb. That is what we are calling a simple, a simple sentence. Now, having said that, let's move on and look at the next idea. That how do we combine sentences in English? Now that we know what we are talking about. Now that we have an idea, a rough idea of how we are combining these given sentences. Now it sounds good now that we want to look at it. How do we combine these given sentences? The first way of combining sentences is using what? Punctuation. We know what punctuations are in English. We know the punctuation marks in English. And I want to draw your attention that those given punctuation marks in English are the ones that we are talking about. They are those ones that we can use to combine what? Sentences. So that a sentence moves from being a simple sentence into a compound what? Sentence. Or a simple sentence into a compound sentence into a complex what? Sentence. So we have to move there. So sentences can be combined using special punctuation marks. And we have mostly only three special punctuation marks that help us to combine what? Sentences. And what are they? The first one is a dash. We know what a dash is in English. That is a dash. It can be used to combine sentences. Number two, we have a colon. We know how to write a colon in English. This is a dash. And then number three, we have a semi, a semicolon. So that's how we write a semicolon in English. We are calling them special punctuation marks. We are calling them special punctuation marks because they are the three that we use when we are combining sentences. How do we use this special punctuation marks when we are combining these given sentences? A dash is used to add more information about some parts of a sentence. It is rather informal and although you may see it when you read, it's better to avoid this punctuation when you, are, when you are writing. That it is used to add more information. If it is used to add more information, for example, you can be in a position to say, Jamal played well. And then instead of putting here a dash, it does not sound good if you put there a dash. That Jamal played well. We want to add there some more information that he is a good player. So Jamal played well. And then we put there a dash. It doesn't sound well. You put there a dash. They say he is a good player. He good, he is a good what? Player. Jamal played well, dash. He is a good player. It does not sound well. So you simply avoid it and say... Jamal played well and now you put there a conjunction or Jamal played well, comma, he is a good what? He is a good player. So you find that we avoid the dash because it doesn't look a bit formal. It's a bit informal. So to avoid that informality scale and maintain the formality scale, we get to a level where we say Jamal played well. He is a good what? He's a good player. So you tend towards the formal scale. You don't get to the informality what? You don't get to the informality scale. Now having said that, we move again and look at our next item. That a colon is used to add more information and especially to give examples and something in the sentence. What follows a colon may be a clause. I want us to concentrate on this given example here. I have highlighted the examples using two shades, red and, and black, so that we get to understand exactly what we are talking about. That he is a great athlete, colon, he plays soccer, comma, baseball, comma, and basketball. Now, what does that mean? That he plays soccer, baseball, and basketball is a clause. Remember we said a clause is a group of words. A clause is a full sentence that has a subject and, and a verb. Now, when you look at this particular sentence here, he plays soccer, baseball, and basketball. That one is a clause. It is a clause because it has a subject and, and a verb. So we are saying what follows a colon may be a clause. The word is maybe. It's not a must. Maybe a clause. 
So if it is a close, and then we are at that particular point. We are at a point where we are saying he plays. Where is our subject in this given clause here? Where is our verb in this given clause here? He plays soccer and basketball is a clause. Look at it this way. Concentrate and look at it. He is our subject. Plays is our verb. So, he plays. This one is our subject. This one is our what? This one is our, is our verb. So, he plays soccer. That one is combined there. So this sentence, he is a great athlete. He plays soccer, baseball, and basketball. That is a complete sentence, English sentence that has been what? It has been already been combined to that given, to that given effect. Now, we move on again. A semicolon is used to connect clauses and is the most important punctuation mark for combining sentences. It can be used alone to connect clauses. It can be used alone to connect clauses. For example, he is not heavy. He is my. He is not heavy. He is my. Now, at that particular point, you find that at some given point, this particular sentence is not actually complete. So, I left it intentionally here so that we fill up what we are talking about. So, we can fill up here and we say that here he is not heavy. He is my friend. For example, he is not heavy, semicolon. He is my friend. So we are saying a semicolon can be used alone. It can combine two aspects and it can just be used alone. So it's the most important punctuation mark for combining sentences. This is the most appropriate. In fact, when you are writing paragraphs, it is good to identify the semicolon so that because for them, they make sense on their, on their own. It doesn't require any other punctuation, any other punctuation mark to be used at that particular point. We move on. Now, it can also be used to connect clauses together with special thinking or rather linking words such as however, moreover, therefore, e.g. conjunctive adverbs, I think, therefore, and I am. Now, in the above examples, it's a semicolon and not a conjunctive adverb that connects the what? The clauses. So, in the above example, it is a semicolon and not a conjunctive adverb that connects the what? That connects the clauses. Now, the second aspect is coordination. This is a way of adding sentences together, and in most cases, there are compound sentences in English. And in these cases, the two clauses of sentences are, are combined into equal what? They are combined into equal partners. The combination of into equal partners is what we are calling coordination. They coordinate. They move with each other at that particular point. Now, words that connect clauses on this way are called coordinating what? Conjunction. They are coordinating conjunctions because they coordinate amongst themselves. Then, and is used to join clauses that contain additional information. Like, I bought a ticket and I got onto the, onto the bus. So, and there has been used as a conjunction. And then, or is used to join clauses that combine, contain choices or alternatives. You want to choose an alternative. You want to choose a choice. So, you say, write me a letter or send an, or send an email. But, is used to join clauses that contain opposing ideas. I arrived early but no one was there. So you give the opposite. You arrived there. You thought that you'll find other people there, but you are the, the only one who was there at, at first. So is used to join clauses that contain ideas of cause and effect. E.g., the jacket didn't fit, so I took it back to the, to the store. So you use so there. The reason why you took the jacket back to the store was because this jacket did not, did not fit you. Three, we have subordination is a way of combining sentences that make one sentence more important than, than the other. In most cases, complex sentences in English take this way of combining the sentences. These are sentences are called, or rather, sentences having one main clause and subordinating clause. So, the subordinating clause is the one that tells us the information about the subordinate clause. That subordinate clause is attached into the main clause. So, the main clause makes sense. The subordinate clause does not make what? Does not make sense. Now, one of the sentences being combined is reduced from an independent clause to a dependent clause by adding words such as when, though, if. So subordinating conjunctions or who, what, that, we call them relative pronouns, depending on its function. E.g., I don't know what you are talking about. 
and then I read the letter that was on your table. So subordinate clause that modifies or gives information about the what? The one I read the letter. Which letter did you read? I read that letter that was on your on your desk. So we have reduction. Here we go one step beyond reducing one of the sentences to a subordinate clause. We can reduce it to less than a clause. We can reduce it to a phrase. And a phrase is just a group of words without both a subject and a verb. E.g. the boy scared by the movie began to cry. So the boy was scared by the movie and then the boy began to do what? To cry. So we want to reduce it. We have reduced it. We can say the boy was scared by the movie. So you put it together. The boy scared by the movie began to cry. So we analyze it by saying the boy was scared by the movie. That is the, the sentence. So we have reduced it. Instead of writing all this, we have just reduced it into the boy was scared by the movie at that particular point and the boy started crying and then we have a position here we take a word or a phrase and place it in a parallel position to a noun in the sentence and a positive is like a parenthetical statement surrounded not by parentheses but by what by commas sarah the most serious student in class always did her homework now in this given case sarah was the most serious student in the class sarah always did her work all those are sentences but then we are combining those given sentences into that particular aspect so in that given case i want you to concentrate on actually what we have tried to cover and then we shall have a recap of the same in our next class so that you are able to understand exactly with proper examples what we have been dealing with i want to wish you a nice time and stay safe as we continue fighting this pandemic thank you very much